back, people. Welcome back. It is the end of the year. And wow. this time go around, I try not to use the lures from 2021. All of us fishermen, so we know how this works. Usually once you find a lure you like, you still buy more lures and you continue to use the ones you like. So, let me get up a little closer. My top 10 this year, I used all year long, primarily, just to try something different. I stayed away from my top 10 from last year. It was kind of hard because I always wanted to use those just to catch fish. I will say I use these lures in waterways that were extremely difficult, highly pressured, no private anything, no private lakes, private ponds, private sections of the river, all pressured high parks, streams, places that anyone could access. And the lures worked and they worked well. And I caught fish that people didn't think were there. So with that being said, let's get the honorable mention out of the way. And if you know me, and you've watched a few videos this year, this one was thrown a lot because of the size and because of the fact that the alder bearing could do it. The... Waxworm, Chabarosca rig. Here's what I'm gonna do. There's gonna be a video bottom right of the lore actually catching fish. Bottom left will be the details of the lore. And I actually think this time, instead of showing all the entire fish to the list, in the video, it's gonna show maybe the few different ones that I did catch. And I will say, this thing caught everything and it's still intact. That's what I like about it the most. It is very stretchy. Very, very stretchy material. Very hard to destroy by fish. I think this one here I know it's 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 over a hundred fish for sure. No questions asked. I think in one video it got boring and I know for sure I caught probably easily 30 crappy and I had to cut it. But yeah, this is a 1.5 setup. No, a 1.1 setup, 1.1 gram setup. The wax worm on a Trevor Roscoe rig. I didn't actually try throwing it without the little Trevor Roscoe on here. But that's the honorable mention. Number 10. I'm, I'm putting this in here because it's my kind of, my new, well, I won't say my new, it's definitely the water tester. And it's made in the USA and it is such a odd lure. I've seen it two ways. One way without a little spin on the front and one with the spin on the front. It is called the Pee Wee. If you could see that, the Pee Wee. Two hooks. I don't know the weight personally. I know it's a two and a half inch pink rubber lure that gets tore up pretty easily uh, it has a little piece of line going through there keeping 
the two hooks together, I have caught a ton of fish on this style as well. This is a new one. Other one got tore up. They tear this thing all to pieces. If some other company like Nico Bates would remake this, they would be on the money. Cause it's just such a simple, simple lures work, man. For some odd reason, you can go out and buy the most expensive thing and come back to something as simple as this or a Cinco and catch the biggest fist of your life. All right, let's, let's get out of that. Number 10, that was number 10. Number nine. It's a first for me. I don't use these often, but a missile bait. They call it a micro jig, the Ike edition. Mike, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He says it so much. Iconella. I think this might be by him with a Helgamite on the back end. Number nine. I don't use jigs often, but I had to put it in the lineup because it actually caught, I caught bass with it. I've seen Bluegill try to take it. I think I've caught a crappy on it. But it made it because I actually caught a fish with it and it's in the finesse, bait finesse category. It's really light. All the information will be, like I said, the bottom left, explaining what it is. We're number eight. Number eight. Hmm. Since we're speaking on Helga Mites, we'll keep it in that, that realm. The Nico Bates Helga Mite worked for me a lot this year. I didn't even have the Trevor Roscoe rig. It's, it's actually pretty cool because it floats. Of course, it stays up like this, the bead on the bottom makes it stand. But if you take the bead off, the lure itself stays on top of the water, depending on the size of your hook. And then the reason why this one has a heavier EWG hook is because I wanted it to get under some lily pads right under the surface. And you'll see that video, just a little snippet of that video. I didn't put that one together yet, but this here made number eight. Algamite, Nico Bates. A lot of soft plastics coming up. A lot of soft plastics. Should we keep it soft plastic? No. Guys, number seven. I'm telling you, this is hard. I'm going to go with Mega Bass Nano Siglet. As you can see, them hooks are bent. <laughs> The trout tore this thing up. Between the trout and the pickerel, this thing did not stand a chance under the trees. It works the I, open water, bluegill. Under trees, bass, pickerel, the trout, the trout can't stand this thing. They, this thing hit the water, they waste no time tearing it up. This will, my only con, I usually don't do this, but you see how, because those hooks bent, so I have to talk about it. I personally wish they would have went with a, either like a smaller treble hook or yeah, a smaller treble hook would have worked for me or, or like this. I just feel like this could just come off so easily and I'm getting ready to prove myself wrong. So it doesn't come off so easily. All right, never mind. I screwed that up. It just looks like it would. I want to put a split ring on there, a little tiny split ring with 
either a single hook or the double J hook like that. But that's number seven, the Mega Bass Nano Stiglet. Number six. It's a soft plastic. I went with a soft plastic this year. And this one is called Tom's Bait. He calls it something. I want to say he's in Poland or somewhere. I, all the information I said will be at the bottom. I put a banjo metal rig with the spring hook into the actual banjo metal hook. Trout like it, the bass like it. Bluegill, they'll come and look at bluegill come and look at anything. If I feel like man, if a bluegill personally got up to a pound on a regular basis, they will be tearing up lures left and right. But this is a Tom's bait. Minnow, he I've seen on his Instagram that he uses jig heads that makes it stand up. I like the banjo metal just to give it that darty effect. And just seeing the trout come up and aim just for the head because they can see the eyes. And you, when you use this and you're passing by trout, you snatch it real quick. They take a look, but if you slow it down, they'll come up and look at it and then swim off. But if you keep it moving, they'll, they'll keep at it. They'll definitely keep at it especially brown trout. That is a brown trout killer. That is the bottom five with the honorable mention. So, number five. Number five. This was a tough one because I didn't know if I wanted to go with this one or the other spin. But I went with Cure Pop. I want to say it's by Jackal. I could be totally wrong. Jackal could be the other company, but this is the Cure Pop. It's a small 3.5 gram spinner bait. And I really just feel like I'm tearing this one up. It's a really strong well-made swivel on that blade there and the vibration is really strong there was three spinner baits that i could have picked from first one was the booyah pond magic but that's slightly bigger that's the reason why i didn't take that one the other one would have been An area, I think is what it's called. And it doesn't have a skirt on it. You can look that one up. I'll put that in the description. But I picked this one because of the size and the fact that it has a skirt. And the blade's pretty cool. Yeah. So, that's number five. Getting down to the nitty gritty. Number four. Hmm. It's a top water. And it is called 42 Chubby 42. I just looked at this box and don't even jackal. It's a jackal lore. I've actually seen this in a knockoff version by I don't know how to pronounce their name, so I'm not gonna ruin it. Begins with a T off of AliExpress. They have a version of this that's like seven bucks in comparison to this one. I think it's like 15 or something ridiculous, but it works and it works phenomenally. That little mouth, popping in the right area and the small mouth tears this thing to pieces. I can't stand it for some odd reason.
feather slows down the casting dynamics a little bit in comparison to what I would have used top water, which is my Poco Poco. But I will say this is the aggressive version of the Poco Poco just because of the feather being on the end. That's number four, the Chubby 42. Chubby, that's a Chubby. Number three. Oh. What can I say about number three? It's a rare lure. It's discontinued. You can find them used. And they're not that expensive either. If you, depending on what site you go to, you can actually find them used. Um, I don't know if I can give you a link because I don't want you to... eBay. I'll, I'll say eBay if you can find it because I found it used. And it is Lucky Crab. Bevy Vibration SP. And I don't use a lot of lipless cranks, but the fact that they created a suspended lipless crank, which now there's other companies now showing up with lipless cranks that's suspended. And this is almost true suspended. Lucky Crafts. They do a really good job fine tuning suspended lures to make them stay within that, that water column for a really long time, a really long time. I've caught a lot of different fish with this thing. I haven't tried it for trout or smallmouth actually. I haven't even tried it for smallmouth. I have bluegill, bass, crappie. I think I caught a shad on it. But yeah. The Bevy Vibration SP. I don't know if it comes in different sizes. This one here is a really small one. Not as small as the B Vibe or anything like that, but beads in it. Really cool, really cool, really cool. I will say. For number two and number one, they're not sinking lures. I didn't do any sinking style lures this year. I like suspended a lot. So number two, the Chopsy Minnow. The Chopsy Minnow. I caught a lot of different fish with this lure. Actually, this isn't even the, this isn't the used one. This is the new one. My used one is beat. I didn't, that joint doesn't even look like it has paint on it. I might have to repaint it. But past three years, this thing's done crazy numbers. 4.5 grams, 50 SP, Sakura. Chopsy Minnow. This is a rare one. I don't know where you can buy this from. You can check on eBay. The thing about it with eBay is you're going to pay an extra fee. I'm pretty sure if you were like in France or something like that, you might be able to get your hands on it out of one of those stores without having to pay all the crazy tax and shipping fees. But this lure is true suspended too, for the most part. Actually, it's suspended floating. So it'll go down, but it'll slowly rise versus sinking. I actually, on my one that's beat up, I have a little tiny weight underneath the lip here just to make it dive deeper. But yeah, open water. This thing's amazing. I don't know what it is. Because it sits still for a pretty long time. But yep, that is the Chopsy Minnow 50 SP. Number one. Number one. The most action erratic little lore I've ever used. And it's another suspended. And this one's called... By Little Lucky John. 
Bazura 40 SP. And the way it's shaped, it has a left right motion. If you jerk it quick enough, it is it's, it's wild and crazy. On the stop, when it pauses, any fish that's looking at it's gonna snatch it. I've caught everything on the board with this lure. I don't know how I found it. I don't know, I, I was searching SP minnows just to see the different sizes. And I said, man, this is this is what I want. It has a magnet in there or something? What is that all about? I don't pay me any mind. I think that's a magnet. What is that? What the heck is that all about? Is there really a magnet in there? Why would it do that? All right, never mind. All right. Number one, people. Bazura by Lucky John 40 SP. I recommend this lure to anybody if you can get your hands on it. The last number one, two, and three are, are rare. Kind of hard to find at a decent price. And I'm pretty sure if this video gets out there, the price of these are gonna probably shoot up or people are gonna start dumping the ones that they have and try to get the most money out of them. But here's number one. I recommend it for big finesse, catches everything. This list here is completely different in comparison to 2021, I do know. And I try to really stay away from the 2021 lures and, and see what will work. And these lures all work everywhere. I will say, if you made it this far, subscribe. Leave a comment on what you think I should use that you didn't see me use. Remember, the circle is a lifetime subscription. Free. It's free. Free, free lifetime subscription. And the squares or square would be some kind of fishing video. But until next time, y'all. Have a good one and peace out. Yeah, in the next video, I'll be going over what various American line I use and why. And also the knot that I use. And like I said before, peace out.